Hello, my name is Nick Rolfe, Director of Facilities Management, which is part of the Estates Division at Imperial College. That also includes property and projects. Collectively, the Estates Division has responsibility for managing all of the buildings, campuses, which make up the Imperial College and includes functions such as design and construction of new buildings, building refurbishments, collection of waste and recycling, cleaning, security, fire management, planned and reactive maintenance. Facilities management also leads on sustainability. The college has calculated its carbon footprint and has set challenging targets for a year-on-year -year reduction in energy use. The targets include efficient use of water and reducing waste to landfill through recycling. This day one health and safety induction DVD aims to equip you with the essential information and instructions which will enable you to keep yourself safe as you commence and progress with your work at Imperial College. We believe that health and safety legislation is not about stopping you from going about your work but ensuring that you do so in a safe manner. The theme running through this DVD is SOS which stands for see it, own it and sort it. This basically asks all of us to be aware of our personal responsibilities and to take positive action to improve safety for ourselves, our students, our contractors and any visitors to the college. We in the Estates Division are committed to providing a quality environment in which the college can conduct its business, but this will only be achieved if we are all clear about our shared responsibility when it comes to health and safety. We take our health and safety responsibilities very seriously towards you and as responsible people we expect you to do likewise for yourself, colleagues and other people you meet whilst at work for Imperial College. Whether you are a member of Imperial College staff or a contractor, you are required to view this DVD and then, through completion of the questions in the associated workbook, demonstrate you have acquired the necessary knowledge to keep yourself safe. Now please select the version that applies to you, but before doing so remember that you will need your workbook and a pen and to follow the instructions on the screen. The course will take you approximately 30 minutes to complete and we hope you enjoy it. Your manager will check you have completed this training and discuss with you any issues which arise. Good luck and remember, see it, own it and sort it. Imperial College employs a huge variety of contractors to do varied types of works on various sites. In order that all parties clearly understand their roles, responsibilities and acceptable and unacceptable ways to conduct themselves, contractors need to be aware of the various policies, procedures and codes of conduct. It is a duty of all contractors to familiarise themselves and comply with the health and safety policies and codes of practice provided by Imperial College in full. The contractor must work in accordance with all instructions and training provided by their own employer. Many of the risk assessments which will be required to comply with have been developed by both Imperial College and the contractor and in accordance with industry best practice. In law there is indeed a legal requirement that where two or more employers share the same workplace, the employers and the employees involved must work jointly to cooperate on health and safety matters. Failure to do so by a contractor may result in them being told to stop work and in extreme cases leave the workplace in the event of a major breach of health and safety. Whilst working on the premises of Imperial College, contractors need to be aware that certain Imperial College staff are empowered to stop contractors from working. To avoid this situation from arising, contractors must be aware of the Imperial College Code of Conduct for contractors that covers such matters as language, use of radios and personal stereos, apparel, etc. At no time must a contractor place themselves or others at unacceptable risk. Remember, SOS. See it, own it and sort it. The key learning points for this section are to be familiar and comply with health and safety policies and codes of practice. Work in accordance with instructions and training provided by your employer. Comply with the Imperial Construction Safety Code of Practice. At no time place yourself or others at unacceptable risk. 
nominated Imperial College staff have the authority to stop you working if necessary. The security, safety and welfare of contractors working for Imperial College are a high priority for all of us. At all times you must be in possession of and display a valid ID card whilst on Imperial College property. You may be challenged if this is not the case. Whilst working for Imperial College, you will be given access to areas for which you are authorised via the ID swipe card system. You must not enter any areas for which you are not authorised. At all times, you must wear prescribed safety equipment whilst on site, for example, safety footwear and a high visibility jacket which should display the company name. You must also find out the location and how to access on-site welfare facility for contractors. And finally, in the event of you being injured or an emergency involving a colleague or other person, you must know where and how to access first aid assistance. Remember, SOS. See it, own it and sort it. The key learning points for this section are Display your ID card at all times. Do not enter unauthorised areas. Wear your prescribed PPE, safety boots and high-vis at all times when on site. Know where and how to access the contractor welfare facility. Know where and how to summon first aid assistance. Some workplaces and jobs have, as a result of the risk assessment process, become subject to the permit to work systems. For example, access to areas of the college such as roofs, plant rooms, tunnels, laboratories and rises all require a permit to work. Under no circumstances will access to these areas be allowed without a valid permit to work. All areas displaying a red, amber or yellow sticker under the access control systems can only be entered with an authorised permit to work. The reason for restricting access to such workplaces is due to the fact that the hazards may be significant and specialist information and instructions will be required to manage the risk safely. Permits to work are obtained from specific people only. For example, building managers, maintenance managers and facility officers. Remember, SOS. See it, own it and sort it. The key learning points for this section are Access to many areas around the college requires a permit to work as prescribed by the access control system. Never access areas you're not authorised to enter. Permits to work are obtained from specific people only, for example, maintenance managers. Due to the nature of work done at the college, the risk of fire is always present. The college has conducted fire risk assessments and from that process established procedures which will vary from workplace to workplace. As a contractor, it is your duty to ensure that you are familiar with fire procedure in your workplaces and if working in accordance with a permit to work system, any additional specific instructions that may apply. The time to find out what to do is not when a fire is broken out. In recent years, research has proven that the more prepared organisations are, the risk of extensive damage, injury to people and even loss of life will be dramatically reduced. So what you must be able to do in your workplace is to be able to raise an alarm using a brake glass, be able to recognise fire signs, for example call point and fire exits, be able to recognise the alarm tone in that workplace, understand the do's and don'ts when hearing the alarm, proceed quickly but orderly to the nearest exit and it must be emphasised the nearest and not the one you are most familiar with. Do not stop to collect personal items and do not carry hot drinks out of the building. You must know where the assembly area is. If you are somebody who is specifically trained to use a fire extinguisher to tackle a small fire, then this should only be done after the alarm has been raised, 
The area has been evacuated. You are not at risk from smoke inhalation and you have a clear exit to escape away from the fire. If you are in any doubt about your responsibility as a contractor, speak to your manager immediately. Remember, SOS. See it, own it and sort it. The key learning points for this section are the college has conducted fire risk assessments for all workplaces and you must know how to raise an alarm, recognise fire signage, recognise the alarm tone, understand the do's and don'ts, know where the assembly point is, ensure no hot works are undertaken without a permit to work, only fight a fire if specially trained to do so. First Aid at Work regulations place a legal duty on your employer as a contractor to provide first aid provision for their staff if they become ill or injured whilst at work. As contractors you will work on various sites, however the responsibility still rests with your employer to ensure adequate first aid provision based on risk assessment is available for you. This may mean members of your company being trained as first aiders and being readily available to assist you or by mutual agreement Imperial College providing that service for you. It is the duty of your employer to advise you of the arrangements and for you to know how to seek help in an emergency. In recent years, the numbers of people whose lives have been saved through immediate basic first aid has increased dramatically. It is therefore essential that you are clear about what to do in an emergency. The time to find out what to do is not when you are confronted with an emergency, which could be life-threatening. If you are confronted with an emergency, your natural instinct will be to help someone. If you do so, your first priority must always be to check for danger to yourself and the victim and establish their level of response. Establish if they have an airway, establish if they are breathing and establish if they have a circulation. If the answer is no to any of these, the situation is life-threatening and help must be summoned without delay. Contractor staff who are trained in first aid should wear the fact on their clothing. Remember, all accidents, no matter how trivial, must be reported to your employer. And finally, if you are involved in a near miss, in other words, a situation that could have resulted in harm or injury, this needs to be reported in order that both the employer of the contractor and Imperial College can prevent a reoccurrence with a more serious outcome. Remember, SOS. See it, own it and sort it. The key learning points for this section are First aid cover may be provided by your company or the college. You must know what to do if you or another person is hurt or taken ill. Know the number to call in an emergency. Know who your immediate workplace first aider is. If confronted with an emergency, the priorities are always check for danger, establish level of response, check the airway, check for breathing, check for circulation. If in doubt, call for help without delay. Report all accidents and near misses. As a contractor, you are working for Imperial College because of your specialist skills and knowledge. However, you may encounter hazards with which you are not currently familiar. At Imperial College, you may come across hazards such as asbestos, biological, chemical, radiological and traffic. In respect of asbestos, you must be aware that many of Imperial College buildings contain asbestos. You will need to know in what building materials and fabrics it is likely to be present and know what to do if you come across a material you think could be an asbestos contaminated material which is not already labelled as asbestos. In respect of biological, chemical and radiological hazards you must be aware that these hazard types can be found in various locations around the college and are identified by the signage now shown on the screen. You must not enter these areas unless authorised to do so. In respect of traffic hazards, you must be aware that all campuses have internal transport routes which become congested at times and constitute a significant hazard for pedestrians. 
When walking, always use marked pedestrian routes or pavements. Never park a vehicle in a location which is illegal or likely to cause hazard or blockage. Always try to reverse into parking spaces and if busy, seek the assistance of another person to supervise when reversing. And finally, never exceed the marked speed limit. It is there for a purpose to reduce injury to pedestrians and yourself. Remember, SOS. See it, own it and sort it. The key learning points for this section are you may encounter hazards that are new to you. Be aware that asbestos is present and labelled in many buildings and you must always proceed with caution. Know what to do if you suspect or come across asbestos. Biological, chemical and radiological hazards will be signed. Never enter hazardous areas without permission. Comply with all traffic signs and use signed pedestrian walkways. Never park a vehicle in a forbidden area or hazardous manner. When reversing, always try and reverse into a space and seek assistance if available. In conclusion, this short film has given you an overview of how we can all work together to ensure risks are controlled adequately and that Imperial College and its contractors maintain a safety record to be proud of. For your part, we look to you to take reasonable care of yourself and others, follow safety instructions, report all areas of concern and encourage you, if necessary, to stop work and report serious hazards without delay or fear of criticism for taking the initiative. If in any doubt of any matter to do with your health, safety and welfare, speak to your manager or contact at Imperial College. Remember, SOS. See it. Own it and sorted.